January. <laughs> After 14 emotional, awesome, stressful, victorious, and unforgettable years, I'm so proud to be standing in front of this group of students, my incredible classmates, the class of 2014. I began writing this speech on a flight to Boston on April 17th, the last day of high school when we all willingly threw cake on each other's faces and soaked our uniforms with water balloons. While smelling like stale birthday cake and dishwashing soap, with wet hair, of course, since my shower cap failed me, I couldn't help but reminisce about my lengthy time spent at Miami Country Day. The amount of amazing memories I've had with all of you is mind-boggling. Whether it's a time I got caught faking Teddy's mother's phone call to dismiss him from school, or when we all sat inside the library before a Borchers test, convincing ourselves that we would somehow pass. We can't forget about the one and only Cash Money Let Me um, when you became <laughs> Tuss Jumbo, hashtag Mokai Mondays. And when Johnny didn't actually win the stock market game. Shocker. I still wonder if Isaac is going to Babson or not. Oh yes, Senor Hernandez, what happened to our amazing class trip to this beautiful city of Chicago? Oh, and the time Andrea and Iggy were a thing. Actually, multiple things, given the on and off schedule. Hey Kiana, did you cut your hair yet? When Alana thought she was cooler than you? I don't know about you, but I could have watched Marlon and Kenesha dance their butt off at prom all night. Work it, girls. Who could forget the time Amanda and Neil brought their relationship out from under the shadows and did the unthinkable? Held hands in public. <laughs> oh, and how Matt Cantor started dating a freshman. Oh wait, that was me. that made us laugh like, like crazy. But on a serious note, I cannot begin to describe how fortunate I am to have spent so many irrepla irreplaceable years with all of you. If there's one thing I've learned in high school, other than finding the antiderivative of sign, it is to be you. Get it? Find your passion and run with it. Dance and sing like an idiot. Date someone totally wrong for you. Tell a jerk what you think. Be random. Like Steve Jobs once said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the result of, of, of other people, of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. As we all go our separate ways, we will discover who we are and what the future holds. But as for now, live in the present and appreciate them for the pre live the present and appreciate the people standing sitting right next to you. Look at them and thank them for the precious moments you have all shared. I want to thank my teachers for their knowledge and wisdom, my parents for their everlasting love, my brother for his frequent hatred, my base for everything they do, and lastly, I want to thank this one man who molded me into the person and musician I am today. I will never forget the one time I, I will never forget the one time I traveled for the orchestra in seventh grade. And this and this guy who looks like Santa Claus tells me to stop playing and rejects my entry into the orchestra. Yeah, I cried all night. I mean not only did I have enough issues with my frizzy hair and bushy eyebrows, but I wasn't allowed to express my talent along with my fellow classmates. So I tried it again the next year, ready to face this man once again, and he let me in, out of pity, I guess. And un unexpectedly, that was the start of an incredible friendship, one of laughs, memories, and tears that I will pack up and carry on with me as I turn the page onto a new chapter in my life. Whether it's a time I would barge into his office and blabber out, blabber about, blabber on about my boy problems, knowing he probably wouldn't tell me what I wanted to hear, but would always listen. Or to the countless times I would sit on the notorious black couch and mess around with the violin, making sure he would tell me what notes are playing in the out of tune. From those crazy Vero Beach music trips, or the adventures to orchestra districts and states, the times I spent with this man are priceless. His patience and efforts often go unnoticed, but I'm here to say that he has touched the lives of so many, including my own. He puts his reputation on the line just to give his students a chance to shine on stage. He spends countless hours of his own time to rehearse a song until the student feels com completely confident with it. 
He makes it so easy to wake up every morning and get to school for orchestra. He's had so much faith and trust in me, and I hope the least I've done has made him proud. I'll truly miss starting every morning off with him, but at least I know he'll only be a phone call away. So, Mr. Wigger, I have one last question for you. Am I still good enough to join the orchestra? You know I always hold that against you, even though you have cleverly come up with the excuse that I wouldn't be the violin player I am today if you hadn't accepted me. I could go on forever speaking volumes about you, but I think it only makes sense if I let the violin speak for itself. As it is one of the last moments as a country day student, I'll play Zardas, a song that has brought great successes and memories, and has led us to orchestra states, something that hasn't happened in many years. So.